What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a review on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Um, this review is coming from a perspective of a guy that is not just a YouTuber that does this for a living, um, but you know, a YouTuber that has a, a day job that works outside most of the time throughout the day, like outside fixing water leaks, you know, um, pretty much construction work is if that's what you want to look at it as. So this is a review from a guy that, you know, is always outside. So with saying that, the first thing I want to talk about is the design. The design of this phone is, you know, phenomenal. It's a beautiful phone. I know it's kind of weird to hear me or anybody say that about a phone, but it is a really nice phone. Samsung really did do an awesome job making this phone. Like the curved edges going around the screen are amazing in my opinion. So yeah, the, the design on this phone is phenomenal. So you're probably thinking, how does the design help with outside stuff? And really it don't. But the waterproofing, the IP68 rating that this has for dust and water is comes in handy because whenever you know I'm in a water leak or doing anything and I forget to take it out of my pocket there's going to be no dust or no water that gets inside of this phone so it's going to be it's going to be fine so that's the positive of having an IP68 rating phone for a person that works outside all the time is dust and water it really comes in handy so the next thing I'm going to go over is a few specs about this phone that literally has nothing to do with you know working outside or any of that but if this is your first time watching a review on this phone you know the specs just in case you want to know them um, the first spec about this phone is its ip68 rating which i just mentioned for dust and water resistant it has a snapdragon 855 which is the cpu um, gpu a chipset that's in this phone which is very good it's a very good chipset the bezels and the chin on this phone are extremely small um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys if you're watching this video and you're a tech guy you know that already but if you're anybody coming in you know that don't know much about cell phones and you're just looking to get a cell phone the bezel and chin on this phone is extremely small a good percentage of this phone is nothing but screen on the front of it of course it has a little notch cut out but yeah the, the notch does not bother me at all um, I don't even see it when I'm using this phone I know it's there you know it's two cameras one is a depth sensor camera and one's a regular camera one thing about this phone that I don't think no other youtuber mentioned is that 4k 60 frames a second no longer has a time limit of five minutes the time limit has been taken off um, I guess because the CPU is more powerful in this phone. With the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, there was a five minute limit with the 4K 60 frames a second. With this one, there's no limit. And, and for me, that's a big deal because usually when I'm recording like a vlog style video, which now I have a new camera, um, I have a Canon mirrorless camera, but um, before that I used nothing but cell phones to record and I would record everything 4K 60 so I can slow things down if I wanted to and it would come in handy. But with that five minute limit, it would always get in the way and I would always have to hit record again. With this phone, there's no limit. So just so you know, I haven't heard any other YouTuber say that for some reason. Maybe because it's irrelevant, I don't know, but there's no limit on 4K 60. Um, in my opinion, this phone now, because there's no 4K 60, limit it's just as good as the iphone video camera in my opinion it don't overheat i haven't had it overheat and i've recorded you know a good amount of time on this phone and it hasn't overheated on me uh doing 4k 60. so and and for for me i like the colors a little better on the samsung whenever you're recording on the samsung galaxy s10 than i do the iphone so yeah that's just my opinion on the camera when it comes to the iphone and the samsung um, i do like the samsung a lot better just in case you were wondering how i knew the difference my wife she has an iphone and i can compare the different footage and the samsung footage to me is always better in my opinion so another thing i want to hit on is the battery life on this phone i carry two phones every day i carry a note 9 and I carry a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus now. The Note 9 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and this one has a 4,100 milliamp hour battery. And to be honest, the Note 9 has a very long battery life, and this one has a very long battery life. But what I had to do is I had to go into settings and turn off double tap wake, and then I also had to turn off um, a rise to wake feature. I think that's how you say it, the Arise the Wake feature. 
because every time I would move my phone, the screen would turn on and that would kill battery. So that's two recommendations that I would have is turn off the double tap feature and turn off a rise to wake and your battery will last a lot longer. So the battery life in this phone is great, but I think you have to adjust a few settings. So moving along to the fingerprint reader. In my opinion, the fingerprint reader underneath the screen is a lot faster and smoother than a lot of YouTubers are giving it credit for. Um, in my opinion, in my experience, it works great. It don't miss, it don't miss hardly none whenever I use it. I don't know why a lot of you, maybe they unlock their phone more than me, but I don't miss hardly none at all. As long as you put it on the right spot and then press your finger down just a little, you know, a little bit of pressure, it's gonna unlock. So for some reason, a few YouTubers are saying that it's not fast and it's not that good, but in my opinion, it's a great alternative to the back fingerprint reader. I mean, the back one is faster, but there's nothing wrong with this. The end, the screen fingerprint reader is great technology and it's fast. There's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. Yeah, it always could be faster and more sensitive, but it's the first generation in display fingerprint reader. So. so another thing I could say about this phone, yes, I've had the Samsung Galaxy S9. I had the Note 9. I still have the Note 9, but this phone, just like the other phones, you know, it's a Samsung phone, so it's gonna be smooth, it's gonna be fast. But this one is smooth and fast, and it feels like it always has service. It just feels like the S10 Plus and the Note 9, the S10 Plus always has service whenever the Note 9 don't. I don't know what that is, if it's the antennas are a little different, but it just feels like the service is always a little better on the S10. Um, and I've used it for two weeks and I've been on vacation one of those weeks and I've been traveling and I've noticed a lot of areas that this phone has service when the Note 9 didn't. So another thing I have to mention about this phone since this is a review from a guy that just works outside. I work in construction at my job. Not really construction, but it's outside work. It's hard to explain. I don't want to give too many details because where I work is kind of a private, you know, area. This phone is extremely tough. I never put it in a case and I just, I, well, I think me never putting it in a case has to do with I never drop phones for some reason. Never have I ever dropped a phone in my life. The only way my phone will ever break I know this sounds kind of cocky, is if somebody else, I give somebody else my phone and they drop it. That's the only way my phone will get dropped. So I don't wear, I don't use cases. I don't use screen protectors. My phones, they don't, I mean, they sometimes they get scratched because like I said, I do work outside. It is dust and water resistant, you know, almost proof IP68 rating, but you know, dust and little dirt particles in your pants will scratch a screen. So yeah, sometimes I get scratches, but they never get broke. So this is a very tough phone. This phone is a lot lighter for some reason than the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. A whole lot lighter. Um, when you put the two in your hand, it's a big difference. So that's one thing I have to mention about this phone is it's a tough phone. Um, and I work outside 85% of the day and this is a very tough phone and it's super bright. The screen on this phone is amazing, super bright. And this is plenty bright enough to see exactly what I'm doing in the sun. So with saying that, the new One UI on this phone is amazing. It's a lot more useful using it in one hand. Um, you swipe down and you swipe down again. It's, it's easier to use in one hand. Just this whole new operating system, I guess you can call it One UI, is very one-handed friendly and that comes in handy. So one thing about this phone that I never thought I would add in this review is gaming performance. <laughs> But I've been playing PUBG a lot lately um, on my free time. I guess because it's my vacation, I had a little free time. And I've been playing PUBG a lot lately. That game, PUBG, is a very graphic intensive game. Well, you can see a little bit of it right here in this video demonstration, but it's a very graphic game. The frame rates are pretty high. It has to be because you're always moving around. And this phone performs very well with that game at high graphic settings. At very high graphic settings, it performs very well. Um, so that's one thing I have to say about this game, which is obvious, it has a very fast CPU in it. It's gonna perform very well with high intensive games. So that's one thing I didn't think that I would add in this review, but I played a lot of games this vacation. It was fun and this phone handled it very well. So this phone has a feature, it's called wireless power share. I never thought I would use it 
you kind of when, when you hear about it you kind of think it's a gimmick but when i thought about it i used the gear s3 it's a watch and sometimes i go to bed and forget to charge it the next day and the watch only charges wirelessly on a wireless pad but if i forget again i can do wireless share on this phone and put my watch on the phone and charge it say on my lunch break it take a whole hour it'll be 100 percent charged because it'll charge a watch pretty fast because the watch battery is small so that's one feature in this phone that i thought i never would use or even talk about but it comes in handy i'm sure it will i mean i haven't forgot since i've gotten it but when i do forget i have the wireless power share to charge my watch on this phone so that that's a big deal in my opinion keep my watch charged and do it right from my phone and this battery in this phone is so big it's not really going to affect the battery life on this phone so my conclusion of this whole video to be honest i tried to think of some negative things to say about this phone because i try to do you know negative and positives and this phone i guess you know samson is samson and they're they make great phones i even asked my wife she switched over from the iphone to the samson galaxy s10 and last night i was typing up this video try to you know i had a bunch of positives but i was trying to think of some negatives to say about this phone so i called my wife in here and she had no negatives either so if you can think of any negatives about this phone like if you have one put them in the comments and if they're valid negatives i will pin your comment to this video which it might not mean nothing because it might not even get that many views but if it does i will pin your comment in the video and then there would be some negatives for some people to read about this phone but this is a very well-rounded phone um, there's nothing really i could say negative about it it's a very good phone for anybody that's working outside inside it's a great phone i mean i said it like five times now so thanks for watching have a great day and i will see you in the next video